In 1956, the U-2 high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft entered service. This aircraft once fearlessly conducted reconnaissance operations in multiple countries or regions, relying on its high ceiling and long-range performance. Most of the world's fighter jets were left in the dust, but the Soviet Union had an interceptor that could threaten the U-2, and that was the Su-9. In 1953, the Sukhoi Design Bureau began designing a new high-altitude, high-speed interceptor aircraft, codenamed T-3. The aircraft made its first test flight in 1955 and entered service in 1959 after improvements were made to its radar system and other designs. The aerodynamic design of the aircraft was based on research conducted in the early 1950s on the aerodynamic center of air. After conducting various design experiments, the research findings were applied to the Su-9. The aircraft had a pair of large swept-back delta wings with a wing area of 34 square meters. It had a nose intake and used a turbojet engine with an afterburner chamber called the AL-7F1-100. The maximum thrust was 66.67 kilonewtons, and with afterburner, it could reach 94.12 kilonewtons. The aircraft was 16.772 meters long, had a wingspan of 8.536 meters, and a height of 4.82 meters. It weighed 76875 kilograms empty and had a maximum takeoff weight of 12512 kilograms. The maximum flight speed was 2120 kilometers per hour and it had a endurance of 1 hour and 18 minutes with internal fuel tanks, which increased to 2 hours with two external fuel tanks. The aircraft's main weapon in combat was the K5 air-to-air -air missile mounted on four underwing hardpoints. At the time of the Su-9 service, the Soviet Union was troubled by the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft. This seemingly slow aircraft could fly at an altitude of 20,000 meters, leaving most fighter jets helpless. The appearance of the Su-9 appropriately solved this problem. The Su-9 interceptor did attack invading U-2 aircraft, but it seems that it never directly shot one down. There were interception records in March and April of 1960, but the interception on May 1st was the most thrilling. At that time, a U-2 aircraft invaded, and there happened to be a Su-9 flying near its flight path. This Su-9 seemed to be on a ferry flight and was not armed. After receiving the interception order, the pilot, guided by the ground, directly flew the fighter towards the U-2, launching an attack that resembled a suicidal attack with the posture of, my aircraft is ordered to collide with your aircraft. Due to the large speed difference between the two aircraft, the collision was not successful, and due to fuel shortage, no further attacks were launched. However, Captain Igor Menchukov claimed that his attack caused flight problems for the U-2 and ultimately led to its destruction, although everyone believed that the disintegration of the U-2 was due to surface-to-air missiles. As one of the most advanced fighter jets in the Soviet military at the time, the Su-9 also underwent a series of modifications and upgrades. In September 1959, an improved aircraft set a record flight altitude of 28,152 meters. By the mid-1960s, the Su-9's technical performance had fallen behind. The Su-11 interceptor, based on it, entered service around 1965, and the Su-15 interceptor also entered service. Shortly after, the Su-9 began to be retired. A total of 1,150 aircraft were produced, all for the exclusive use of the Soviet military. Although it never directly shot down a U-2, the existence of this aircraft still posed a threat to the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft and greatly limited its reconnaissance routes.